I just got back a couple of weeks ago from a trip to Iceland that I planned for over a year. And as much as I just wanted to go to visit and experience that super cool country, a big reason why I wanted to go was to capture photo and video. And I was so excited to be able to do that. I made a whole video about my experience trying to get landscape photography in Iceland. So if you haven't seen that, please check it out. I'm really, really proud of it. It's actually one of my favorite videos that I've ever made and it really shows off and highlights the beauty of that country. Now, in the year that I was preparing for that trip, I spent a lot of time trying to assemble what I thought would be the perfect photo video kit. And so I wanted to share with you the equipment that I brought with me, which not only is great for Iceland, but I think is also just a great bunch of equipment to take when traveling. So to start off with, I've been using the Think Tank version two Streetwalker hard drive. This is a really nice bag. It's a pretty big bag. I'm five foot 10, you can kind of see the size comparison. So I definitely feel like a dork when I'm walking around with this giant camera bag, but it really does hold everything that I need it to hold. And it also takes the place of like three camera bags where in the past I used to have to have my computer bag and my camera bag and my drone case and, and my luggage with all of my clothing this sort of takes the place of all of that. So it makes it really easy to travel with. One of the things that makes it really, really great as a camera backpack and where some others fall short is the straps are really comfortable. They're super padded and foamy and adjustable. And so even though the bag is really, really heavy, the support that it gives you as you're walking and carrying it for a long time, make it pretty easy to handle that heavy, equipment load. It has held up, it looks brand new and it still feels brand new. So it's a really, really high quality, super durable bag. It's been in some pretty intense weather conditions over the past few months and it still looks great. So I really, really love this bag. In addition to being really comfortable and padded on the back, it has side pockets on either side. On this first one, uh, this is where I would normally keep a water bottle, which sounds kind of silly, but there's a lot of camera bags that don't give you the option of carrying a water bottle and when you're traveling, it's really important to stay hydrated and have water and something to drink. So that's actually a huge feature and I like that these are expandable. The other side is a very similar pouch, but it has a little like pocket in it where I actually keep my Polar Pro ND filters for the DJI Mavic Pro. I keep my Sony RX100 Mark V in here. There's plenty of room for this camera in the main bag, but I like having it in the side pocket just so it's super easy to grab. I really, really love this camera, even for, I think for the first 50 or something videos on this YouTube channel, this was the only camera I used. It was my main camera and it had quickly become my favorite camera of all time, even though I never thought I'd own a point and shoot camera. It's got the flip up screen, which is really, really nice. I mainly use this now as a second camera. I also use this a lot for slow motion B-roll because this is a beautiful slow motion camera. The reason that this model of the Think Tank bag is called the hard drive is because it has a second pocket here, which actually has a little pouch and it also has room for a laptop. This is a 13 inch MacBook Pro, but I've, tested it out with a 15 inch MacBook Pro and that fits in there totally fine. Normally I don't like carrying my computer around in a backpack just cause I'm worried about it. But this bag is so padded that I really haven't had any issues. And the bag also comes with these tripod straps. I've been using this Benro Travel Angel aluminum travel tripod. I need to do an entire video about this thing because this has quickly become like one of my favorite pieces of camera gear. It's pretty small and compact. It's super duper lightweight. It's really, really sturdy. It can extend out really, really tall. You can detach the legs and use it as a monopod. You can even use it as a walking stick, which I've done before. It's got a hook on the bottom to hang a weight or a bag, so that way it keeps it much more stable. You can invert it so the camera's upside down and really close to the ground. This is such a great tripod. It's really well made. Everything is made out of aluminum and high quality parts. I'm gonna make a whole separate video about this. And so these tripod straps on this bag, they can actually just snap off and they just fit in this front pocket here, which expands pretty nicely. And this is actually where I also keep my DSLR batteries in this little Think Tank battery pack. I like having them on the outside of the bag. I've just found it's easier to get to them when I need them. I should also mention that the zippers on this bag are all YKK zippers, which I never paid attention to zippers before, but apparently those are really high quality zippers. 
and it really never jams up. It's always really smooth, even the big zippers for the main compartment. When you're dealing with a camera bag that you're going in and out of, I've had a few where the zippers jam up and aren't that reliable. These ones, it actually feels really good to zip them. There's a front pouch here that's not super huge on this bag, but it, it holds enough stuff, some pens and pencils. I always keep lots of earplugs in any bag I travel with because you never know, planes, trains, hotels, wherever. I also have this, which is super cool. It's a USB cable that has pretty much every kind of connection you could need. Even though I often bring proprietary cables, having one or two of these in your bag means that you know you have exactly what you need at all times. This has really saved me on more than one occasion. And there's this cool little key strap in here, so I just kind of keep it attached there, and it lives in the bag. And then, this is a large camera bag, so it can hold a lot of stuff in the main compartment. On the top lid are two clear pockets. In this bottom one, I keep a lot of these little cable ties, which are really helpful for tons and tons of stuff, not just cable management, but also luggage, just keeping things organized, neat. Sometimes you need to get stuff out of the way. These are perfect for that. I've also got a few extra propellers for the DJI Mavic Pro. In the top one, that's where I've got my intervalometer, my time-lapse remote for the 6D Mark II. I've got this little tiny light. I think this is a selfie light for cell phones, a selfie light, but it's actually a pretty dang bright light and it has a clip so you can clip it on stuff. And you can even adjust the brightness. So it gets pretty darn bright and it charges through USB. So this is a really handy thing to have. I've got some extra batteries for the Sony RX100 because as much as I love this camera, the battery life on it is terrible and it eats through batteries like crazy, especially if you're filming anything in 4K. And then I've got this Pelican case and I have regular SD cards, some adapters and micro SD cards in here. This is waterproof, dustproof. You really can overlook sometimes how important your memory cards are and it's really important to not only have plenty of them, but to take care of them. First thing, my main camera is the Canon 6D Mark II. I got this after the Sony RX100, and this has become my favorite camera of all time. I absolutely love this camera. It's full frame with a flip out screen. It has crazy good autofocus, incredible color. It uses Canon lenses. It takes great still photos, so it's the perfect camera to have if you wanna do video and photo. I absolutely love the Canon 6D Mark II, and it got, I made a few videos about it, it got kind of trashed when it came out last summer, but slowly and surely, people have been coming around and realizing that it's a really, really good camera. For sound, I've been using the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. It has a dead cat on it that I just leave on all the time, even though it makes it a little bit bigger and more obnoxious. It really reduces wind noise even indoors if there's air conditioning or a fan or something blowing. I've got this light here, which is actually an aperture light. It's this little battery operated small light and it works incredibly well. It's kind of like the other one. It's just a little better built and super bright and the battery lasts quite a bit longer. If you have both of these, you're pretty much set as far as lighting goes, no matter where you are, even if it's the middle of nowhere in Iceland. Since I was traveling to Europe, I needed an adapter. It can be used in any of these countries. And what I really like about this one is that it also has USB plugs, so it's got regular outlets and USB outlets. Next, I've got this Think Tank bag, which I've talked about a few times. It's a filter pack, so in here I have my super cheapo <laughs> variable ND filter from Amazon. The brand of this one is Zomi. It was relatively inexpensive. I've been using it a lot. It has some pretty bad X shape vignetting, but it really does work if you're filming anything outside having a variable ND filter is really, really crucial. Now for still photos, I've been using these Polar Pro quartz line ND filters, which I did a whole review on these. These are absolutely incredible. They are so high quality. They are a little expensive, but they are absolutely worth it. They don't get fingerprints. They don't get water on them. Here's a pro tip for Iceland. It's very, very rainy and wet there, and there's waterfalls everywhere. And as soon as you get moisture on your camera lens, you're done. So it's really important to, to have a cloth of some kind in your camera bag. So that way you can dry and wipe off your lens. Now I never just store stuff on my computer. So I also have a four terabyte Seagate hard drive. These are about a hundred dollars. They're not solid state, unfortunately, but they work really, really well. I have a few of these for work and home and YouTube stuff. 
it's very important to make sure not only do you have enough memory cards on your trip, but you have somewhere to actually store all those photos and footage at the end of the day. And I like to keep them in more than one place, so keep the memory card you used separate, put stuff on here, maybe keep them in two different bags just to make sure you don't lose everything if something goes wrong. I didn't delete everything off my memory cards until I got home, backed up everything onto an additional hard drive, and then was absolutely sure it was okay to delete all the photos and videos and reformat the memory cards. Now a huge reason I bought this bag was that it actually fit very easily the Mavic Pro. And so the Mavic Pro was the main reason I wanted to go to Iceland originally. I wanted to get that epic Icelandic landscape, aerial photography and videography, but I actually ended up only flying this twice while I was there. There's a lot of people who also want very epic landscape photography and videos in Iceland. And even when you're somewhere that's really quiet and peaceful and remote, it was pretty common to then hear the buzzing of a drone overhead. And so I actually got really quickly annoyed by how many drones there were, and I just decided not to use mine anymore. And even though there's lots of places you could go in Iceland that are super remote, where you're not gonna bother everyone if you fly your drone, I still kind of found that some of the birds and wildlife were really confused and stressed out by them, which makes sense. They're not used to seeing and hearing something like this. So I ended up not using this really at all, only twice throughout the trip. So if you're going to Iceland, it's really popular to bring a drone, but I'd really encourage you to be very thoughtful and mindful about how you use it so that it's not disruptive to anybody else or any of the wildlife, animals, and natural residents of the country. All that aside, having a case that I can carry all this camera gear and a drone with all of its stuff is really, really awesome because in addition to the Mavic, I have one, two, three batteries for it. So I have all four batteries. I have the controller and I also have this Polar Pro mount that lets you mount your phone on top of the controller instead on the bottom. I have the iPhone 8 Plus, so that in the case is just a little too big to fit in here, but this mounted on top is perfect. And then it's really important if something goes wrong or if you need to touch something up to have a few tools. So I have this park tool, it's actually a bike tool, but it's a bunch of Allen key wrenches. Lots of tripods and camera equipment can be adjusted and tightened up with Allen keys. I would really encourage you to have this in your bag because stuff can come loose just through regular usage. I also have, of course, a Swiss army knife because this pretty much just covers anything else. Just be sure if you're flying that you take this out and put it in your checked luggage before you get on the plane because obviously you can't take this onto an airplane as a carry-on. Now, I only brought three lenses on this trip. I brought the Canon 16 to 35 F4. I've made a video review on this lens. This has become my main lens. I absolutely love this lens. It offers image stabilization and it's super crisp and sharp, so I was able to get some incredible photos and incredible videos with this 16 to 35. I also brought the Canon 24 to 105 f4 lens. I knew I was going to be doing a lot of landscapes that involved wide shots, so I didn't worry too much about not having a telephoto lens, and this got me pretty much as close as I wanted to go most of the time. And then finally, I brought the Canon 35mm f2. It's got image stabilization, it's super sharp, it's also not horribly expensive. It's not an L-series lens, but it's pretty much built like an L-series lens. If I were to go back on this trip, knowing that I wouldn't end up using this drone, I would take the drone and all the batteries and the remote controller out of this case and add in a 70 to 200 lens because that would have gotten a lot of usage throughout this trip. However, lots of times when I travel with this bag, I pretty much always have my drone in it because drones are so small now, this is one of the bigger drones that DJI makes and it's still this small. So it's really cool when you're going somewhere, you never know what kind of cool stuff you're gonna see where you'd wanna put a camera up in the sky and get a different angle. So I do like traveling with it but I try to be a little more aware of, do I wanna take all that stuff, do I not? If I were going to Iceland again, I would probably leave the drone at home. And then finally, I've got some charging cables, some camera chargers. On the bottom of this compartment, I actually put a divider and then under it, this bag comes with a rain cover, which I had to use a couple of times because it rains so much in Iceland. So it's nice to make sure this fits you know, somewhere out of the way. A cool thing that I didn't really mention is this is 100%
customizable inside. Even these main dividers here can be taken out, moved around. So you can really adjust this bag to fit whatever you need. And there you have it. That's pretty much everything that was in my camera bag for my Iceland trip. It's also pretty much everything that's in my camera bag all the time. So, cause that's sort of the equipment I have. I don't have anything else. I had to borrow a camera to film this because my camera's in the video, so. Like I said before, this isn't a sponsored video, but there are links down in the description below to all this equipment if you're interested in it or you wanna know more about it. I don't personally buy new equipment unless I really need something and I know it's going to work really, really well for me. So this is the stuff that meets those requirements, that works really, really well for me, It's very, very reliable, and that I use constantly on at least a once per week basis if not more. So if you haven't checked out my Iceland photography video, please take the time to watch it. I'm incredibly proud of it. I love that video. It really, I think, does a good job of showcasing the beauty of Iceland along with the struggle you can sometimes face when trying to capture photo and video in a new place. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing and I will see you guys next time.